So in section 1.4, we're going to talk about experimental design. Now, there's two ways to kind of gather data, observational and experimental. We're going to mainly focus on observational, but it's worth talking about experimental, especially if you're going to be a social science major and you're going to take uh, an upper division stats uh, course. Um, it's worth kind of looking at the, uh, the, the overall outline of that. So experimental design is typically what we think of the experiment idea where you have a couple groups and you're changing something with one group uh, and the other one you're kind of holding constant, right? So uh, experimental design is we're looking at an independent variable and an explanatory variable. So there's going to be something that we're kind of measuring or tweaking and then we want to get an outcome. So for example, in a statistics class, whether uh, the type of technology you have could um, uh, be related to your overall grade in that case. So uh, I could give one group, a uh, one class, um, a graphing calculator, and then I could have the other class do it completely manually. So independent and explanatory variable. So independent variable there would be whether they're using tech, the type of technology the explanatory would be the grade that they actually get. And we sometimes refer to those as dependent uh, variable or uh, response variable, respectively. Uh, one thing you want to be cautious of is a lurking variable. So it is very difficult to try to hold everything constant except for that one thing you're altering. I can't just... Uh, uh, focus everything on the technology, it's possible that students might have financial reasons. Um, they might be working a lot or there's all these other factors that could play a part into that. So we want to be cautious of that and be careful what we call these lurking variables. So something else that might affect it that we probably didn't look into it. So observational study. And so an observational study is something that where you're not really in uh you're not really influencing or changing altering uh the group so here we have a, a survey that we do we ask a, f uh, a couple thousand adults how they go online now even though i'm interacting with them and i'm getting that information i'm not changing or tweaking anything i'm i'm just listing the results they have so we call that an observation or i'm just noting the results and i'm going to go ahead and collect that now that's different than an experiment where I'm actually going to affect one of the groups, so the control group there. So here I could have uh, two different groups. So we have about uh, two groups of roughly about 200,000 uh, in each group. And so for one group, we're actually giving them a vaccine. And uh, for the other group, we're actually not giving them any vaccine. We're giving them a placebo, so kind of like a, a sugar pill or something where they think they're getting the medication there. And uh, so there's that one thing that we're tweaking. Everything else we're going to try to hold constant, but there's one thing that I'm actually changing. And so that's what we actually call an experiment. That's the main difference there. And a couple of things on an experiment is we talked about this placebo and we want to make sure that it's blinding. So I don't want someone to know whether they're taking uh, the vaccine or not, because if they know they're not taking the vaccine, they know they're not getting healthier. And uh, this seems a bit harsh. Uh, again, we don't always have to give them a fake drug. They could be comparing to an old drug and then a new drug as well or a new treatment uh, that we have. Uh, but we want to make sure, and the reason for that is that the mind is a very, very powerful thing. Uh, there were some studies done, like a 60s and 70s, where they would um, give people a social experiment where they would give people alcoholic drinks and have them interact. And they would see how they progressed throughout the night. And after a few drinks, people were getting, uh, you know, very loose and uh, more aggressive. And, you know, they kind of recorded all of that. And it turns out that they actually didn't give anyone any alcohol. They just thought they were taking alcohol and they started acting a certain way. And so uh, the mind is very powerful and we want to make sure that that placebo effect doesn't happen. So we typically tell one group they do not know whether they're taking 
the actual drug or not, or the new drug or the old drug. And so we call that blinding there. Uh, double blind is where neither the person uh, uh, giving the treatment or receiving knows. Now, someone at an administrative level knows, but this is in case if one of the side effects is, let's just say, excessive vomiting for this pill. And a person complains to the doctor, hey, I have excessive vomiting. If they're aware that they're not taking the actual drug, that they're taking a placebo, they just might say, hey, um, uh, it has nothing to do with the actual drug there. You're just, uh, you know, we'll keep you in the study. But what we want is we want them to treat everyone the same. So if anyone reports any type of symptom, we want to make sure that uh, they take everyone out of the study uh, equally. And then, of course, ethics. Uh, before, again, there was a lot of studies done where they would give uh, subjects um, uh, uh, certain types of drugs to get them ill, uh, or they would uh, have these harsh treatments. And we want to make sure that we're not administrating anything of that. So there's a moral now of ethics that we want to make sure we follow uh, when we do that. So there are some guidelines, but we want to be very, very cautious with that.